Hello, this is the silent one. Each time I come to Aurora, I visit the cemeteries there. Around 12 years ago, I uploaded the video R.I.P. Aurora, which I thought was pretty good for the time and covers many of the grave sites there. I do not feel the need to do an updated version of that, but there are two grave locations that are important to me, so I wanted to do two GoPro videos for them. That is not to say that I do not think any of the others are important. There are lots of interesting stories of the people interned at this cemetery. Sue Silver's book, Aurora, Nevada's Silent City on the Hill, is an excellent resource for this. One of the important pioneers of Aurora and the Bridgeport areas is the family of Horace and Elizabeth Martin. These markers in front of me are the kids that tragically died during their time around here with the exception of the one on the far right, Hottie Martin. He died at the age of 18 of an accidental gun discharge while hunting when the family had moved to Mendocino County a few years after Aurora. The marker second between the two is for James. He died of typhoid fever at Twin Lakes outside Bridgeport. He was the first of the family to die in 1865. If that wasn't bad enough, Dick age 6, Frank age 8, Pearl age 2, and Daisy age 4 all died of the diphtheria epidemic that hit Aurora in February of 1878. One thing I did not do last time was show all the names on the obelisk. That is one of the reasons I wanted to do this video. There are old pictures from 1890 and 1948 that show the little markers for each child. Unfortunately, those are no longer around, but it shows that the graves extended a little more out than what these rocks have in their place these days. With that said, rest in peace, Martin family. One thing I said on the old video that needs a little more clarification is one of the kids survived the epidemic. That would have been Elizabeth Martin, age 13 at the time. She too almost died, but the story is, while choking on the phlegm in her throat, her mother frantically got a thin piece of firewood and rammed it down Elizabeth's throat. Apart from her throat bleeding, she survived. However, a total of three Martin kids that lived in Aurora at the time, Ezra, Mary, and Elizabeth, lived on into the 20th century. I mentioned Sue Silver's book earlier, but two others that are specifically about the Martin family are The Martins of Aurora, A Gold Rush Family by Peggy Knudsen Lee. This one gives you the history of the family. It has pictures of the kids and the rest of the family. And then there is Tales of Aurora, Bodie, and Columbus, written in 1915 and 1916 for the Inyo Register by Horace Martin. This was compilated and has commentary by Peggy Nets and Lee. This reproduces Horace Martin's articles about his experiences and what he remembered of these places mentioned. 